Hey everyone, Joe here. Welcome to part four of the Audacity Accelerator course. In this part, we're gonna be looking at the user interface. I'm gonna show you where you can find all the tools and functions that you need to get working on your audio. So you've got Audacity installed and loaded up. Now what you're greeted with here is called the project window. The project window is what you see, and you'll see pretty much all the tools you're gonna to be using uh, for your work in Audacity. Now, if you don't see this section here, this track with this blue audio wave on, I recommend importing some audio first, just so you're seeing the same thing as I am. Now, if, you, if you're not sure how to import audio, I've left a link on the screen and in the description to part three, where I go over to how to do that. So the project window, there's a lot going on here, isn't there? Quite a lot of, um, a lot of buttons with not many labels uh, can, can be quite overwhelming when you first see it, especially if you haven't used a digital audio workstation before. But not to worry, because a lot of that stuff you're not even going to need to use straight away. Um, and it does become quite self-explanatory once we get into it, once you used each, each tool a couple of times. And just a side note, I'm on Win the Windows 10 version, um, but it's pretty much laid out the same across all the different versions. So starting from the top right here, we've got the menu bar, which is a typical menu bar that you'd see across most pieces of software. You've got the file, options, edit, um, and then moving on to the more audio focused uh, menu items like uh, effects and analyze and tracks and things. We will be going into more detail about the individual options you find in the menu bar later on. And then next up, we've got the transport toolbar, which is pretty similar to what you'd find on any kind of media player. Um, it's very user friendly. You've got your play, uh, your pause, record, and so on. You're gonna be using those a lot. And then on the right of that, you've got your tools toolbar just here. You've got your selection tool, uh, your draw tool, and they're just different tools that we'll be using to work on your audio, which we will be going into in the videos based on editing. And then further right from that, you've got your meters. You've got your record and your playback meters. Now these are gonna show you the level of audio going into the system. If I was recording using Audacity, I'd see this, this bar moving and the audio going out of the system. If you, if you see the bar while I'm playing back, yeah, you'll see that it's jumping around there with zero being at the top of the meter, the loudest. Then moving further to the right, we've got two simple uh, two simple faders for the, the level of recording. So if you turn this down, you're gonna be recording less volume effectively, um, and then the playback volume there. On the next line here, we've got the edit toolbar with some recognizable tools like co uh, cut, copy, paste. Again, you're gonna be making use, use of those a lot. You've got your back and forward and your zooming in tools um, to zoom into your audio. And then you've got this little one here, the play at speed toolbar, which lets you play in slow motion. So you can see as you drag it down, it's you got 0.5 speed. If I play that, you can play in, in slow motion and then, uh, and, and then speed it up. And on the next line is your device toolbar, which we'll be looking at in, in more detail on the recording stage. This basically is so you can set up where Audacity is, is recording from and also where it's playing back to. So you can select wherever your speakers happen to be. But again, we'll look into more detail when we're setting up. This is the kind of, these are, uh, you're probably not gonna have to set those up more than once unless you have quite a complex setup. And below those toolbars, you've got the timeline here. So you can see uh, this is by default in seconds. You can see you've got 15 seconds, 30 seconds. You can basically see where you are in your audio and how long it is. You can see this track is just over two minutes, 15 seconds. You can also drag with, with a left click, drag your mouse over it and select a portion for it to just play that portion, then it'll stop when it gets to the end. And probably the most important part is the audio track. So we've got the audio, this is one audio track for the music we've imported. It's a stereo audio track, you can see, because there are two waveforms, one that'll be coming out the left speaker and one out the right speaker. And you get a mute button to, to mute it. You've got a solo button, so that if you had more audio tracks, it would only be playing the one that you've soloed. Then you've got an individual volume slider and a pan pot, which pans the audio, which moves the audio to the left or right. Um, 
which is useful in the mixing stage, which we'll go into in a later video. Now, if, so if you had, if you imported another another piece of audio, it would come up on a second track below this one. And then last but not least, at the bottom of your project window, right down here below the scroll bar, you've got your project sample rate. That's something we'll be going into in a later video. We've got the snap to option, just some other information like where you are in, in the track in seconds. Um, you can change that to, to samples and, and time and, and, and so on. So that's your project window. That's pretty much all the tools you're gonna be using. Uh, let's just take a quick look at the menu and see what we've got in here. In terms of how the individual tools work, we'll be using those throughout the course, but I'll just give you an idea of what we've got. So in the file menu, you've got your standard file options, your save, um, open, new file, and your edit options here and preferences to change settings in the system. Let's just take a quick look at that edit preferences window because you can, if you click on interface, change the language, and change what it looks like. As we're looking at the user interface, we might as well have a quick look at that now. We can change it to a dark theme if that's something you prefer. Normally I prefer dark themes, but for Audacity, I keep it on the classic just because that's what I'm used to. Uh, the light theme, that's it. And then moving on, we've got select, view um, for zooming in and out, and you can turn on and off the toolbars if there are some that you just never use, you want out of the way, for example. If you never use the play at speed toolbar, you can uncheck that and it's gone. And then we've got the transport, which pretty much has just more in-depth um, in depth options for your, your transport toolbar there. Then options relating to your tracks, then the generate menu, so you can generate uh, silence and noise and, and basically Audacity will be creating audio for you. But again, that's something we'll look into later on. And then we got our effects, which we can apply to audio to, to change how it sounds. Some analysis tools, some extra tools there. The, this is kind of more adva for advanced users. Um, and then you've got a quick access to your manual and, and checking for updates and things like that. You should now have an awareness of where you'll find all the different functions and the main tools that you need to work with Audacity. We'll be going into further detail on those as we work through the, uh, the other parts and work on our audio. In the next part, I'm gonna show you how to set up Audacity to record and play back through an audio interface. But even if you don't have an audio interface yet, not to worry, it's still worth watching because I'm going over the onboard audio as well built into your computer. So hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you know when that video is released and leave a like if this video helped you and please let me know in the comments section below if there are any parts of the user interface that you're still not sure about or you still can't find certain things. I'll dig into the comments and help you out. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in part five.